In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. God, our most loving Father, you are holy, holy, holy. Help us today and all the days of our lives to understand how sin can really affect our lives, destroy our lives, and kill us completely. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes, my dear friends, it is another chance, another opportunity that God has given us. And today, as we carry on with our series on sin, today we want to look at the consequences of sin. You know, whenever we commit sin, you know, sin has got its consequences, the outcome. You know, whenever we do something wrong, we sin against God, the outcome is normally terrible. It's normally very, very bad. And that's why if today we would understand why God keeps on telling us not to fall into sin, it is because God really loves us and he does not want us to suffer the consequences of living a sinful life. First consequence that we know in the Bible is of our first parents, Adam and Eve. When they committed sin, when they broke God's commandments, you know, they lost the beautiful garden of Eden. They lost the presence of God and all the peace that they had, all the happiness that they had, all the goodness that they have, all the fruits that they were enjoying, all of a sudden, they, all those things disappeared. They started missing all these things. And they were thrown out of this beautiful garden of Eden. And as we all know, Eden means the presence of God. Every time you and I fall into sin, we come out of God's presence. We don't want to be in his presence. And remember that the presence of God is an empowering presence, is a protective presence. The presence of God is a healing presence. And all the people should always remain in the presence of God. When people remain in the presence of God, they will always remain in the state of grace. And when the grace is in your life, that means there is connection with God. And sin, when sin enters into our lives, sin comes to disconnect us from God. And this sin that disconnects us from God connects us to the evil one, connects us to Satan and satanic powers and all curses. And that's why if we do not understand what sin can do to us, to our families, to our nations, to our churches, then we cannot stop living in sin. If there is something that God has always spoken about in the Bible repeatedly, repeatedly, is repent, repent, come out of your sinfulness, stop committing sin. Every time you and I allow sin to come in our lives, we are opening the doors of our lives for the spirit of death. Uh, sin is very, very poisonous, and sin carries death with it, you know. And that's why we are told that the wages of sin is death. Everyone who does sin, everyone who allows sin in their lives, they are befriending death. And this is the worst thing that can ever happen to anybody. The wages of sin is death. There is no sin that you can commit without that sin harming you, destroying you. And that's why sometimes we keep on saying, you cannot break the commandments of God without breaking yourself. You cannot break the commandments of God without breaking your blessings. You cannot break the commandments of God without breaking your own life. Every time you break the commandments of God and live in a sinful way, you are breaking your own life you are destroying your life, you are destroying your future, you are destroying sometimes even the blessings of your family. Because sin has caused consequences, it goes in the coming generation. So what you do today affects not only you, it also affects your children. 
it affects the coming generation. And that is why if you do not understand how terrible sin is, you'll never walk out of sin. My dear people of God, when we look at the scriptures and look at the consequences of sin, one consequence of sin is when you pray or, or when you live in sin, you can never pray. And even if you pray, your prayers can never be answered by God because it is written in Isaiah 59 verse 1 to 2 that the Lord's hands are not too short that he cannot save, nor his ears too dull that he cannot hear. It is your sins that have separated you from your God. It is because of your sins that God does not hear you when you try to pray. Because sin has put a gulf between you and God so that he does not hear you when you pray. If today you are a Christian and you want to pray, sin and prayer don't go together. Every time you pray in the state of sin, your prayers can never be answered by God. When you look at Isaiah 57 from the 19th and 21st verse, it says, let peace be everywhere for those who are far and those who are here. And God is saying that there is no peace for sinners. There is no safety for sinners. So anybody who commits sin can never have peace. Anybody who lives in sin is not safe. And the Bible is very, very clear. There is no safety for sinners. There is no safety for sinners. And one serious thing that we are told in the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians, chapter 5, verse 17 to 21, one of the things that sin does to you, to me, those who commit adultery, those who are drunkards, those who cause divisions, those who live in sin, can never have eternal life. Eternal life, that means heavenly life, living forever. Sin shortens your life. And sin, apart from shortening your life, it does not allow you to go to heaven. Sin can never allow you to have eternal life. Sin cannot allow you to live forever in heaven with Jesus, with God the Father and the Holy Spirit. And if there is something that sin does to people, apart from sin killing us, sin takes people to hell, hell, where there is fire. And remember, God did not create hell for human beings. Hell was created for Satan. Hell was created for demons. And those who have refused to live the kind of life that God wants, now they'll have the same fate with Satan. And that's why every time you and I decide to commit sin, we are moving closer to hell. We are moving closer to our death, our destruction. So anybody who is living a sinful life is destroying themselves. You are destroying yourself. You are destroying your life by living a sinful life. It is very, very serious. Why do we want to lose heaven? Why do we want to go to hell? And we are Christians. We are called to love God. We are called to worship God. We are called to do the will of God. And because of failing to do the will of God, there is damnation. Another thing that we see in the lives of the Israelites Every time the Israelites committed sin, every time they broke the commandments of God, they were taken into captivity. And there was even that time when they were in the desert, remember, when they were complaining so much and snakes came and they were bitten by snakes and many of them died because of the poison of the snake. Sin is that poisonous. You know, when sin is in your life, it is like saying death is in your life. When sin is in your life, it is like saying demons are in your life. And the worst thing is that, according to 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, that everyone who commits sin belongs to the devil. Everyone who lives a sinful life, anyone who continues living in sin, belongs to the devil. Today, many people think they belong to Jesus. Many people think they are Christians. Many people think that they love God. But as long as you live in sin, as long as you do what the, the devil wants, the, the Bible says that all who continue living in sin, 
belongs to the devil. First John chapter 3, verse 8. This is what the Bible tells us. This is what the Word of God tells us. Now imagine the number of Christians in the church today who live in sin, Christians who hate others, Christians who are envious, Christians who are jealous, Christians who are drunkards, Christians who are adulterers, Christians who are doing all sorts of things. They are in the church, but they don't belong to Christ because of this, their sinfulness. Some of them even pray, even receive the Holy Communion, but they don't belong to Christ because the Word of God is very clear. Those who continue living in sin belongs to the devil because sin is a mark that I belong to the evil one. And that is why today, my dear people of God, sin does not benefit us. There is no benefit that sin brings to us. It brings problems, it brings sicknesses, it brings curses, anything that has destroyed human beings. If there is anything that has destroyed humanity is sin. If there is anything that has opened the doors of curses in our lives, it is sin. If there is anything that has opened the doors of demons in our lives, it is sin. If there is anything that has opened the door of sicknesses, all sorts of sicknesses, it is sin. Sin does not benefit people. Sin destroys people. Sin takes people to hell. And sin attracts certain and satanic powers in our lives. Now, what benefit do we get out of sinning? That pleasure that you get out of sinning is a deadly pleasure. It is a pleasure of death. And that is why everybody should say not to sin. It kills us so much. It destroys human souls so much. And it hurts God the Father so much. Remember, the devil does not want to suffer alone in the fires of hell. He wants to suffer with so many souls in the fires of hell. And that is how he's trying to revenge against God. Sin is against you. Sin is not for you. Sin is the greatest killer of humanity. Why do you allow sin to move on? Why did Jesus come in the world? He came to help us overcome sin. He, helped to, he came to destroy the power of sin. And he has given us his blood, the blood that purifies sin, so that we may be able to purify ourselves, to wash ourselves with this precious blood. And again, my dear people of God, Jesus is calling us every day. He's asking us to repent. Repent. Come to God. God will receive you. God will receive us. The door of repentance is open. This is the time that you and I ought to come to God and receive his mercy. May we not allow sin, you know, to move in us, to destroy us. Let us try our best with the power of Jesus, with the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome all the sins in our lives. Thank you very much. And let us all say no to sin. God our Father, Give us the spirit of wisdom that will enable us to say not to sin and say yes to your grace. Even today, help us to say no to evil. Help us to say no to breaking your commandments. Help us to say no to anger, to hatred, to envy, to jealousy, to fornication, to adultery, to homosexuality, and to worshipping other gods rather than you. Thank you, Jesus, for coming in this world to save humanity. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mama,
Amen.